Hey guys, this is Rob with the uh, next video in the electrical Revit project series. Recall this is a SD or a design development DD level video. And we've gotten everything in up through our lighting. And now I would like to draw a preliminary one line diagram. So I want to show you how, how I do that. And we will um, jump right into it. I've already got my project open like we have before. And I'm going to show you over here what I have for some symbols already in our template. And we can always add to this as we need to. And I'm also going to show you that you can just draw, you can just draw your own symbol as you need it. So it's very flexible. But under um, the electrical, electrical details, we have drafting views. And in lowercase, because it's not a production view, it's just one line diagram pieces where I've already dragged in uh, the symbols that we have created for our one line diagrams. So these are what we have. You can see we have, I mean, these are just lines, a lot of this, but other things like this that highlight are a complete family, a symbol family with parameters that can be edited if you click on them. And we've got a board with downward facing uh, fuses and switches and breakers. And we also have vertical facing. Now, multi-story buildings um, will typically have a vertically you know, up. I guess they're both vertical, but going up type of one line diagram. Whereas other single story or maybe only two story buildings might have the down. So you get to select what you want to do there. And we have pieces that work either way. The things like the motor connection, we have both. You can see we have one for attachment from below, one for attachment from above. So that should work either way. Let's go ahead and get started with this. Um, I usually start from a blank sheet or after you've done a few, you may have a diagram from another project that you've completed that you will want to bring in to use. So I will eventually show you how that is done as well. But for this case, we're going to start from scratch. Since this is our, this is our first project together, we're going to start from scratch. So I can either duplicate this entire piece and start dragging things around, which is one way to do it and then deleting what I don't need. Or I can just start from a blank. Let's start from a blank sheet. Well, how do we create a new, it's not a sheet, it's actually a view. How do we create a new view? Well, we go up top to the view and we want a drafting view. We've done plan views before. Now we're gonna do a drafting view. Now I want to call your attention to another view that seems like drafting is called legend. Um, the difference here, they're both a two-dimensional type of drawing. A legend, they explain it is mainly for like a list of the various building components and an annotation. You can create legends for materials, symbols, line styles. So that would be like our symbol list, things like that. But in Revit, the way legends work is legends can be placed on multiple sheets, multiple you know, final drawing sheets. So if you had a symbol list, a small symbol list that you wanted shown on every one of your sheets, you can use a legend. A drafting view, on the other hand, can only be placed onto one sheet. So one line diagrams, or we only place them on one sheet. We don't typically show them in multiple places, so we're fine. So we'll use drafting view. Also, when it comes down to trying to pull a view from another project that you've used into your project, you can only pull a drafting view. You can't pull a legend. So there's all these restrictions built into Revit for what you can and can't do. And so what I would recommend is we'll use a drafting view whenever we can. And if we need it on the multiple drawings, we'll go with the legend. So we'll create a drafting view. And we will call this 
one line diagram and I like to put the voltage here 120 volt three phase four wire so that all shows up in the title if I want it to okay now where did it go I don't see it over here well sometimes defaults don't end up where you want them to go so let's go to the right we're still in our drafting view we're still in our view name one line diagram no, no view, view templates on a diagram look up here discipline oh it went to coordination we want it to go to electrical and a sub-discipline we want it to go to electrical details apply all that now it shows up so remember that the discipline sub-discipline makes it sort in your project browser so now we are in our one line diagram how do we get pieces into this thing well you can click back here and we're going to go vertical so let's start you know pick here and drag across everything you can also pick the other way which is from right to left and you get a, a dash line which is a, um, a crossing window do that now we can just do a simple not a copy here but a control C or or a clipboard copy not even sure if I can get to it from here, right click no I actually have to do control C it copies the clipboard go here and then control V for paste most of you should be familiar with that that's common Windows copy and paste if not you may want to learn it so now I can paste it now what it's showing here is it's aligned on the sheet on the view the same place it was aligned on the other view so I can try to get close to this I mean it really doesn't matter right now we can put it anywhere we want but this is just showing us if I wanted it to be in the same place on the view I could align it there I can also up in the top left go to paste this will let me align it on my sh on my view the same place so I can say aligned to current view paste the elements that were cut or copied from another view into the current view there that happens to be in the same place now again this doesn't matter because it's a fresh view but if you were we'll see later when you're copying and pasting things from sheet to sheet say for example pasting an engineering stamp and you want it to show the same place on every sheet you can use this paste to selected view or paste to um, current view to get it to show up in the exact same place anyway we have that so we are going to call this an MDB I think that's what we call it on our power plan and we can refer back to our power plan as needed power I have to search through the list to find everything first floor power we did call it MDB here we have an MC1, we have 1A, 1B. Okay, so those, that's what we have to show on our one line. Um, in this one, we're going to go for now with few switches. Just that we're assuming that we're going to have some fault, high fault currents because we're downtown with this project. So I'm going to stick with switch and fuse for now and delete that breaker. Um, now I can stretch any of the stuff I want to do this here is just a extra wide line so we have lots of choices for lines we have some built-in line types and that's an extra wide um, this one here happens to be a center line that we're using for a for an equipment border so we're going to have a transformer feeding this and we go back to our one line pieces here's a pad mount click on that control C to copy it and then control V we'll just paste this anywhere we move it around so we've got that 
Um, we're also going to have a CT section in here. So you know, we can drag these lines around left and right, pick the point. Let's say we're going to bring in the CT, this guy here. Now if I right click, I can also say create similar and pop over to this thing and I can do it that way as well. I don't have to copy paste. So there's a few different ways you can do this. So let's put a CT section there and I want to actually, I can do create similar, it'll create a similar line type. Now when you're doing lines, once you create a line, you have these choices of drawing tools. So you can do a, um, you know, a rectangular, other shapes, polygons, you can do circles, you can do arcs. Um, there's even a, a one here called pick lines, creates a line based on an existing wall or line. That's an interesting tool later when we want to try to, you know, draw over something else. But in this case, we're just going to do this. And the tools in Revit will show you the angle. It also kind of snaps to the 90 degrees. Like there's, there's a definite snap when I get there. So that's, I don't have to hit ortho or anything like that. Drag it down. It kind of snaps to the other lines. So there's a lot of built-in snaps when you're drawing in two dimensions. So I'm going to put this like that. Now, for connecting this, I'm going to come in here, go up, and then go down to my bus just graphically. Now, what line type do I want to use? If I have an existing line type that I want to copy, I can use that. I don't yet. So I'm going to go up to my annotate. We are drawing detail lines because we're in a detail view or, or drafting view. Click on detail line. Now I have all these tools. I can pick a line style here. I'm going to use medium lines. And I can change this later. I'm going to start here. I'm going to go down. And we'll pretend like we're going underground. Go up. Keep it 90 degrees. Now sometimes these will align. Show an alignment. This one's not. So I'm going to get close. And escape. Now I'm going to start a line from here and go up. And they kind of fill it themselves. If they didn't. There's some fillet tools, but you can also just easily grab that end, drag it, and it will typically snap. All right. So now let's right click and create similar. I want the same medium line. I'm using my line tool. Go here. And now you can see the dashed blue line aligns with my bus. Like that. Now for this stub up detail, I see that over here, I actually have one. I can copy it or I can just say create similar. As long as I have the drawing already opened, it's easy to get to. It'll, it'll remember that. And then what I find here is I'm a bit too low so I can raise these. Oops. Click on that. Yeah, something like that. You get the idea. And then over here, let's say on this project, I'm going to put in a main breaker. So my tool over here, I've got this giant breaker, or a smaller breaker, whatever, whatever looks right. I'm going to be fine with this one. So let's create similar and put that guy and it'll kind of snap onto that line. I'm going to put it over here near the bus so I can pull this line back. But as you can see, it's, it's pretty easy to two-dimensionally draft here in Revit. It's pretty forgiving. You can also window things and drag them. Sometimes the lines drag with it, sometimes they don't. It depends on if they connect or not, but it's still pretty easy to navigate. Let's make this guy match. Our preliminary sizing, let's say it came up with 1200 amp. And this one's going to have a maintenance switch. 
energy reduction maintenance switch put that on there if it was GFI I could put that any other thing um, we're going to start putting in some feeders now this can be moved around and I can click on it and then do a copy multiple and if I pick on it now it will show me how far apart they are so let's say if I want to make them nice and even I can make them all one inch apart one inch see that and as you zoom in and zoom out you get different levels of precision but that way I can line things up with inches of actual drawing because as you can see my scale was 12 inches equals a foot it's a one-to-one -one type of drawing right now so I have so far I've got two panels and a meter center so I'm going to get my meter center put in now what do I want to use for a meter center You know, we don't have anything like that drawn in here. So sometimes you're going to have to draw pieces on your own until we create an actual symbol for it. So in this case, I'm just going to use the tools. Let's just copy what I have. Create similar. Let's just go up here. I'm going to create similar with that bus. As you can see, it, it does the extra wide line when I create similar. So I can create a bus and then I can draw um, my meters. Let me see what we have here. Yeah, see, we don't have any kind of a meter in here. And maybe something I'll add in the future because we use those now and then. But what I can do here is just use text. This is a a fallback if you don't have what you need you can just draw it on here so you have ultimate freedom hit an M for meter use a detail line let's use a medium line circle get somewhere near the center circle it out there instant meter and so I can do something like that Let's maybe move it up a little bit. When I did crossing, then that the line moved with me. And then we want to create similar. I do that a lot, so I make sure I don't have to keep picking what line I want. And let's get a breaker in here for it, treat it like a meter main. So we want Let's get a breaker in here. Yeah, that'll work. Create similar. Do that, and I don't need. Now remember, if there's things stacked, and I want to get to the one, the little piece of line below this, I can't. Remember tab. Tab is very important in Revit. It lets you dig deep. I just tabbed, and now I'm only highlighting that little piece underneath. Now this is interesting. I got an error here. It says here, um, can't keep elements joined. Well, when I drew this line and to the circle, it joined them together automatically. And now it's saying that they can't, they can't stay joined if I move it. Well, that's okay. I don't need it joined. So I'll say unjoin elements. So that's fine. Some things get joined when you put them together. So we'll do that. And that's my meter center. Let's stretch it up a little bit. And that one didn't stick. So once in a while, these things don't stick. I want to create similar for that borderline around my meter center. Now it wants to draw lines, but I want to do a rectangle. So I can do this. And now I have a rectangle. So there, I just started drawing a meter center. And I can, you know, add squiggles to this for continu continuity, create similar. Use spacebar. Remember, spacebar rotates things to do that. And so that's kind of the start of my meter center. 
I can create similar to get the same text. Meter center MC1. Things like that. Um, then I can show some panel boards coming off of this. Oh, I don't have sizing. Sometimes in DD, I, I won't even put a size. I'll just put X's. Placeholders. In this case, I'm going to get a panel board. So what do we have for panel boards? Down here, we have a main circuit breaker and a regular. I don't need MCB for this case, so I'm going to create similar and put a panel. Now, it's not really aligning unless I get it down here where there's something to align. So if I put it there, then I can drag it up and it stays aligned. I could also draw create similar. I could also draw this line first and then bring my panel in and it would kind of snap. So you have to play around with some of the snapping. You get a feel for it after a while. So there's panel 1A and 1B. So this here I can drag crossing and then just hit copy copy from that base point over to here and there. Now I just did all that again. I just quickly made a copy. 1B. Alright, so there is the start of my one line diagram. And you can continue on with other things. We have generators. Um, you know, This job may have a generator on it to back up the elevator. If it's tall enough, we may have a generator to back up the fire pump, and that's a whole other situation. But this is the basics of how you get your one line diagram here. And you can do text, make sure you have this is quarter inch, that's huge. I want three thirty seconds. You, you can do things like, um, you know, um, provide pad for utility transformer per utility requirements click here I can move that where I want I can click on it I can add leaders just like we did on the plan view and there you go that's the start of the one line diagram All right. Well, I just wanted to show you how to get that started. You can see it's uh, fairly straightforward. And if you can't find the symbol you need, you can always just draw one in and you can copy it around. If it's something we use quite a bit, we can create a symbol for it easy enough. But that's it. Until next time.